Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopsschool.com. Just give me one sec. Okay, I created a folder D training DevOps school, right? So I will keep all our training um, or demos here. So let's go to training DevOps school. And now I'm going to make a directory for Gradle, right? And for today's date, I will st I will create a project for us. So I will say uh, 2021 This is today's date. And here I will say uh, first project. Okay, so this is a project which I want to create here. Now, right now, I don't have any gradle project right so let's create a first project so what will i do i will say gradle in it now gradle in it is going to initialize a project for us a sample project right i press enter and we'll we'll wait for gradle to give us a prompt All right, so here we can see now Gradle asks us what do we want to create? What kind of project we want to initialize? So for now, we will initialize a basic project, right? You can choose basic or if you are developing a web application or a full fledged application, you can use application. If you are writing a library to be used, for example, a C++ or a Java library, you can choose library or if you are developing a Gradle plugin yourself, then you can use Gradle plugin. Now, if I just press enter, it will take the default value, which is basic. So I will choose basic. Right, then in what language should the build script be written? So we will choose Groovy. And then what should be our project name? So by default, the project name will be picked up from the directory name. Um, I can keep this or we can change it now or we can also change it later as well. So I'll just call it first project. And done. Project is done. So now if I open this project in file explorer. Yeah, this is the project which was initialized so in the blank directory first project we did gradle in it and gradle created a lot of these files here right what i'm interested in to see the gradle folder right so gradle folder has all the binaries required to run gradle tasks 
right we will come back to this then we have dot gradle which stores some cached output right and then we have default git git files created your know, git ignore files created then we have build dot gradle which is the default build configuration for our project right and then there is this wrapper which we will talk about later and the settings for the project right so let's open this settings file here let's open it in notepad plus plus so this is our setting file let's see if we can have groovy no so here we can see that root project dot name is defined as first project so this is our project name whenever we will create some artifact from it or uh, any project output that will come from project commands will use will use this as a project name okay so this was automatically picked up when we did gradle in it we can change it here if you want i'll leave it just like that and another thing that we should that i will see is the build.gradle so build.gradle is another file which contains the complete information about what should happen in your build right now build.gradle has nothing build.gradle has absolutely nothing right so we will populate this but let's see what gradle gives us so the basic thing that you execute in gradle is task in maven you run phases right maven compile maven test similarly in gradle you run tasks right so you can say gradle and the tasks name okay so i will say gradle tasks for now and it shows me what are the tasks available for me right so there are some helper tasks for example it can display a help message i can say gradle help or gradle tasks to display tasks for example i just executed that right or you can initialize a project or you can generate a wrapper explicitly so things like that there are no tasks which are created for my project right so let's create a task for us now i will go to build.gradle and i will create a task i will say tasks dot register so i'll register a task and call it as hello right so i'm creating a task called hello and here i will say um print hello world so i created a task which will do nothing but just print hello world for us okay i save it and let's go back to our command here and i will say gradle tasks again And what do I see? That a task was executed called hello world and it executed our task. Right? If I say gradle hello. It will just execute whatever is defined in the task and give us the output. right so this is how you can define your tasks so when you run a task right when you execute a task let's choose a color here a lighter one yeah so that what are tasks tasks are the basic unit of execution
right and you can define tasks in build.gradle you can define a task right and whenever you execute a task you run a command gradle and then the task name what gradle will do is first it will check your settings.gradle it will evaluate whatever is in your settings.gradle or gradle.settings i think yeah, settings.gradle right it will evaluate what is defined there at what is the project name and um, any dependency on any other project and things like that after that it will evaluate your build.gradle then it will see okay what are the tasks defined are there any tasks coming from any specific plugin and things like that we have not talked about plugin but we will do in a bit right and then it will list down all the tasks and execute your task all right so this is what happens now we will going ahead we will also see about plugins and uh, the default tasks that are there i mentioned you know gradle also provide default tasks but we did not see them so we had to create our own okay so does it make sense what is a task task is a basic unit of execution and you can define a task and define what happens in that task Okay. So Amit, for the compilation of this project, is it one task or a series of tasks we are going to define? You can define a single task, but it's always a good idea to define a series of tasks and, and build a relationship between them. Right. Mm -hmm. So we will okay. also see that how it works. Right now, we don't have any source code. It's a blank project. Right. So we just understood mm -hmm. about tasks. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so would you guys like to do hands on here? Would you like to install Gradle and then uh, create a project here? That would give you some sort of familiar familiarity. So I try to do some hands on along with the sessions. Right? so it gives you more um, familiarity and confirm uh, and comfortability with the with the topic. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, so if you have any lab machine, your laptop, or if you are using EC2 instances, whatever. Let's install Gradle. So please install Gradle. So let's do a hands-on. I'll write it in a different color here. Install Gradle. And then create a directory and initialize a Gradle project. Okay, and in that, let's define a task. Okay. So how much time do we need for this? 10 minutes? let's take 10 minutes All right so try to do this if there are any problems please let me know and I can help you out I'll be here and then we go for a break and after the break we will continue discussing on tasks and uh, define how can we create more tasks and also see how we can create full application using Gradle okay so is there anyone who is not trying the hands-on? Because after 10 minutes are up, I will ask everyone, how did it go? So please let me know if you or some of you are not uh, going to try the hands-on. That is also okay if you, if you don't want to do it. So looks like everyone is going to do. Uh, Amit, is there any simple way to update my Gradle if I have an older version from 6? Uh, so the 
the thing is that gradle comes with a lot of its own binaries right but one of the advantages of having gradle is that gradle also gives you a wrapper here you can see gradle w it's a wrapper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so within the wrapper you can actually where does it go where does it go okay not here then um what we can do is if i go to my command line Cradle W dot pad. Now, with this Gradle, right? Gradle wrapper. Gradle wrapper allows, will download Gradle and keep it in your local cache, in your local build directory. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, if I create this project here, right? if I create this project, I had Gradle. I downloaded Gradle and I then created this project. I can now check in this project to my Git repository. And any developer who wants to use this project or work on this project does not need to install Gradle. They can use a Gradle wrapper for hmm. us, for themselves. And in the Gradle wrapper, we can also specify which Gradle version to use. And uh, Gradle will download that specific version itself. Wrapper will download that specific version. I, I see there is a gradle wrapper dot properties file inside the gradle folder yeah here if i change the version then if automatically the version, yes oh, okay so if you do 611 for example i'm not sure if it is a correct version but let's try it and if i do a gradle wrapper here You can see 611 is being downloaded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can enforce a specific version of Gradle to be used. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, hopefully the hands-on is coming great. So one of the things, if I open the command prompt here, yeah, I as I mentioned, yeah, Gradle tasks is a command to list down all the tasks which are available for us, right? So if I enter Gradle tasks, it should evaluate our settings.gradle, then build.gradle and show me the task available, right? But here actually you see it is executing the task here. Why is it executing the task? I don't want it to execute the task, right? Yeah, so what I want it to do is I want me I want it to show me the task but not execute it okay but as I said the build.gradle is a program in itself it's a program in itself it's a groovy script right so when the task evaluation done or when this build.gradle is evaluated by gradle it automatically while evaluating it sees the print statement and it prints it okay so it should not do that so that is why whenever we create a task we put it in a do last block and do last block ensures that this task will be executed only when or this statement will be executed only when it is called okay so i'll i'll save this now and then now let's do a gradle tasks And now you can see the tasks are not, the task is not executed here, right? And if I say Gradle, hello, only then hello world will be printed. Okay, so whenever you define a task, you should put it in a do last block. All right. Now this was a simple task or simple project that we created. Let's go back one level up and let's create another project. Let's call it a simple Java application. So I'm going to make a directory 
simple Java application. And let's go into this directory here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a Java application project. Cradle in it, as you already know, is used to initialize a project. So I'll do that. Now let's choose a application. And then let's choose a Java application. So do we want to have multiple projects? No, we will have only one project. Yeah, so by default is no, but still I can just do it. And then Groovy. And do we want to use any test framework for this Java project? So JUnit 4, it's more familiar test framework, so I'll just keep it. You can also use test ng or JUnit Jupyter or Spock. Um, I'll just keep on that JUnit. Simple Java application can be our project name because this is the directory name. I'll keep it as well. Source package, where is our source directory? Here. All right, done. Right, our basic Java package is created. Now let's explore it in the file explorer. And here I see simple Java project that we created. And inside that, what do you see? you see everything that you saw in the first project, but there is also an app folder, right? In the app, you see source, right? And in the source, you see your main, your Java, your simple Java application, and your basic Java application here. Right, so this is a basic Java application. When executed, it should print hello world for us. Okay, I will say hello world from application. Let's change it a little bit. Right, so this is our basic Java application. Now, because we used test framework as well, so in the source folder, there is a test folder also created. And here a test case is also defined. All right, so you can see here a test case is also defined here. All right, and this test case is based on JUnit as we used JUnit and it's going to run an assert here, which should, which means that this uh, get greeting class should print something. Right now, we will not go into much detail about this because it is Java and we this class is not about Java. This class is about uh, Gradle. So we'll leave this unchanged. Now, if we go to the Gradle dot properties for this project or build dot Gradle. If you go up and you see there is no build dot Gradle here. Yeah, why is that? So to understand that, let's open the settings.gradle. When we open settings.gradle, let me open, close the previous files here. Yeah, so when we open settings.gradle, what do we see? Root project name. And then we see that we are including the app application. So our application is in the app folder and we are including that, right? So that means everything in the app folder will be included here. So this becomes like a module of your project. App is a module of your project. You can create one more folder here called app one or app two or another app or whatever and include it here also, right? So you can have multiple modules in your single project. Now in the app, there is build.gradle. So because we are including app, it will also include build.gradle in the scope of Gradle. Now let's see the build.gradle here. And what do we see? Right? Uh, unfortunately, Notepad does not support syntax highlighting for Groovy. So maybe what I should do is I should 
open it in a VS code. All right, just give me one second. Let's try here. Yeah, so this is our build.gradle. Let's use this. So this is our build.gradle. And now here you see a lot of things. When we created the basic project, it did not do much for us. But here, when we created Java-based application, it created a lot of things here. Yeah, so what did it do? It provided plugins. It added some plugins. So there is a plugin added which has an ID application. Right? It added a repository link. So it wants to resolve all the repositories or dependencies via Maven Central repository. Okay, and what are the dependencies required here? So for impl test implementation, it requires JUnit because we defined that our project will have tests, right? So it requires JUnit, so it is defined here. Then for implementation itself, it requires another binary or library called Guava. So it defines that as well. And then it says, okay, this is our application and the main class for the application is a simple application dot app. Simple Java application dot app. So this is the project name, root level project name dot the folder name. Right, so this is our build dot gradle now. Now, if I go to my command line here and I'll clear the screen, I say gradle tasks. Hi. So now you can see there are a lot of tasks defined here. Right, a lot of tasks defined here. So there is a task called run. Right, there is a task called assemble, compile, classes, and all that. Right, and you can use all of these tasks. Now, these tasks are defined by your plugins. So, the plugin here, this ID application, this plugin enables. For example, the run task. So if I do a run, it will execute our project. So let's try that. I say Gradle run. And for executing the project now, it is going to compile the project and then run the project. Right. And finally, it gives me an output. Hello world from application. Right. Let's do it again. So you can see that it prints or it runs the application, prints the output and gives us the result. Right. Or we can run any other task as well. For example, we can say build. Right. There is also test. Let's do. Let's say Gradle test now before running the test right? before running the test let's go back to our project now in the project you see one more directory created called build now this build directory will store whatever is the generated data for our source right so do you have classes so any compiled classes will be stored here you see the app dot class is stored here then you have your uh, generated resources so headers and all that will be generated here then you have your temp folder to store you know temporary data here right so this is your build folder which contains all the build artifacts whatever is generated by your 
build now we did not do a build specifically we executed run now run internally called build and compilation and everything right so let's do a clean and when we do a clean we go back here then it deletes all the previously generated data it makes our work area clean with respect to gradle all right now let's say gradle test we want to test our application thanks for watching want to study further join our training programs today